Let's talk about pricing of Amazon S3. I'll talk about very basic principle of pricing in AWS and then we will relate those concepts to Amazon S3. If you talk about any services in AWS, common principles remain same. So four basic pricing dimensions. What are these four basic dimension for almost every service? One is the processing. When the service is using some compute resources to process your data or to accept your request or to perform some operation that would be constituting or that would be attracting some charges. If you are storing something, obviously that would be a storage capacity utilized in AWS environment. You would be charged for that network charges, which is data transfer. Most of the time data transfer in or sending data to AWS is free. But once you start downloading that data or accessing that data in a outside boundary, you would utilize a data. You would be attracting data transfer charges. So these are three very common dimension for almost every service processing power, storage capacity used and data transfer or network traffic. Almost every service would may may have one more dimension, which is your specific to service. So that would depend on which service it is like for S3. It could be something else for EC2 that service specific thing, something else. But these three common thing processing storage and network, they remain the same. Now AWS has done a good job in keeping all the pricing information available. You could access pricing of a AWS service by going to this URL HTTPS AWS.Amazon.com replace this service with the name of the service and you will get to the pricing page if you put slash pricing at the end. So if you are looking for pricing for Amazon EC2, you would put EC2 here. If you are looking for pricing for S3, you would put S3 here and it will take you to the pricing page of that specific service. Let's quickly go to one of the pricing page and we will see how that pricing page looks like. So I am here on Amazon S3 pricing. This will be multiple dimensions associated with that. So see this, this is storage price. I'll talk about that request and data retrieval, data transfer, management and analytics, replication and S3 object lambda. These are the different dimension into S3. Now how I relate it to the compute network and storage. So see this storage is obviously what you store. Request and data retrieval. This is where you would be charged based on number of requests you send like put or get request or a life cycle transition happening on an object or you are retrieving data. So that time there would be charges associated. That is your network or data transfer. Sorry, that is your request pricing. That is your compute pricing. And then obviously network data transfer. So if somebody is downloading the object you have uploaded into S3 bucket, then you would attract the charges. And that is what will be there. So data transfer into Amazon S3 from internet is free. There are no charges on that. But once you start downloading data out of Amazon S3, you would attract some charges. And this one is for sole region. Similarly, it would depend on different region that what could be the pricing associated with those specific services. So these are the dimension for Amazon S3. So the dimension for S3 in terms of compute, we focus on number of requests you have sent. In terms of storage, obviously the capacity you consume into S3 for storing your object, then data transfer charges when somebody is downloading those objects and other charges could be monitoring management analytics related. So these are the basic dimensions for Amazon S3 as a pricing. There is a tool available by which you could estimate the pricing, which is called AWS pricing calculator. So let me quickly go to it and perform some very basic operation on how to calculate cost related to Amazon S3. I have to start with the location. I select a specific region. Let's say Ohio is fine for me as of now. I would go ahead and say I am looking for pricing of Amazon simple storage service. I would go ahead, configure it and provide some information like what kind of cost I'm looking for. So S3 has storage classes and other features. We'll talk about them in a minute. Let me first focus on something called S3 standard. In S3 standard, I would have storage costs. So let's say I store 10,000 GB data per month. How will data be moved into S3 standard? 
is your data already available so there will be no charges for transfer in this case then i have to specify number of requests coming to s3 put copy post list put is when somebody is uploading an object that is called a put request copy simple you know post again a similar type of request and then list where i would be listing the content of that s3 bucket that would be calling called as a list request so i could put some rough numbers here that hey i would be accessing this much of put request and maybe i would have more than get that get select other type of request coming to s3 you may provide the data returned by s3 how much data you may be returning let's say i would be transferring around 5000 gb per month and data scanned would be let's say 10000 gb per month so that information i could put here and i can go ahead and check the calculation associated so there are pricing associated i would be paying prices for of 254 dollars out of that s3 standard storage cost is 230 dollar for the number of requests coming in i am paying some amount then for select again some amount for select scan again some amount and the total cost is sum of storage cost data request and s3 select cost which is coming up to me and here is my data transfer calculation so i could go ahead and put some information like hey how much is my data transfer all other regions free internet free outbound i am transferring let's say to service called cloud front or maybe to internet i would provide the detail of that maybe 10 terabyte per month and that would cost me some amount which is shown here how much would be the cost associated with that so that is an easy way to get detail of the service pricing you can save and add this service and then maybe your architecture requires other services too so you could keep on adding those services and afterward you would be seeing the summary of what is the total estimate cost coming to be for your environment so i hope this thing is clear that is very basic information about how the pricing actually works 